public hearing, so we do not need a form. So we will be able to do this, and uh, this will, uh, Ms. Williams uh, will present, and it is open for questions and comments. Public hearing of the GC, JC Few Primary Targeted Improvement Plan, the Jasper Junior High Targeted Improvement Plan, and then the Parnell Elementary Turnaround Plan Implementation Cycle. The TEA Division of School Improvement requires this public hearing and approval process for Jasper campuses under state accountability requirements. Few it has an overall accountability rating of a D. So they are required to um, create and have approval of a targeted improvement plan. Jasper Junior High has one area that they have a D in one domain. So they have to create and have a targeted improvement plan approved. And then Parnell Elementary is in year three of improvement required. So the turnaround plan that was developed the last school year now has to be implemented and uh, they we have just went through the process of developing a plan uh, implementation plan okay. just to um, review a little of the process that we go through i wanted to show the video it's just a short minute of effective schools framework what makes the campus successful how would schools know they're on the right track introducing the Effective Schools Framework, or ESF, a collaborative and aspirational model of success designed for all campuses. The ESF provides a clear vision and shared language for what effective schools are doing. The framework captures those best practices districts and campuses strive for on a daily basis. It's targeted, focused, and is easily accessible to any campus. Consisting of five levers, the ESF encompasses critical aspects of teaching and learning, each lever identifies district commitments, essential actions, and key practices that assist school leaders in their improvement planning. These instructional strategies are research-based and proven effective. The framework provides a basis for school diagnostics while ensuring alignment to resources and support. The Effective Schools Framework supports the Texas Education Agency's vision, improved student outcomes for all the children in Texas. So as you can see, Effective Schools Framework is across the state of Texas for improving schools. It is a scripted uh, training that we go through at the uh, Region Service Center across the state of Texas. They all have the same training. You can go ahead and go to the next slide. And um, just like the video said, there are 13 essential actions under each lever, which is prioritized. So strong school leadership and planning effective, well-supported teachers, positive school culture, high-quality curricular resources, and effective instruction. Throughout um, this school year, uh, it's only been one six weeks for us, but we have um, had uh, several journeys throughout um, the junior high campus, the Parnell campus, and the FEW campus. The um, FEW primary, of course, we uh, talked about why we're in this situation. Um, designated through the district, the district coordinator of school improvement, which is myself, and that was designated in the, on the TEA website August 30th, 2019. Um, the previous years, I have been designated as the school improvement um, coordinator, even though we've had a PSP um, throughout um, the time, but now they've um, eliminated PSPs in the state of Texas, which was Ms. Stevenson, and now we all go through the Effective Schools Framework. So uh, we identify and we go through several steps, uh, Effective Schools Framework self-assessment. And when I say that we went through these steps and um, we covered uh, lots of ground throughout this first six weeks uh, with teachers on the campuses, uh, we have campus leadership teams. So um, August 20th and 29th, of I went to the campus, each campus, and walked with the campus administration and conducted several observations before school, after school, during um, lunch, during hallway transition, and we complete a rubric 
that um, is identified under the Effective Schools Framework to help us identify and be able to um, cover a, a rubric and identify our needs. Um, so we went through evidence collection, essential action and analysis is what they call it, and for few, uh, September 26th, junior high, September 10th, and then that helped us develop a targeted improvement plan and had campus public meetings. So all of this information has been discussed at the few primary, the junior high, and the high school through staff meetings <coughs> and uh, through a campus leadership team meeting and also through public meetings for parents that could attend. So for few primary, the prioritized labor that uh, is what is discussed was effective instruction. The self-assessment, I'm sorry, that's super small, and you should have a copy of it. And when we talk about the uh, high needs, the bigger gap, or the smaller gap, and um, few primary was 3.1, 5.1, and 5.3. So as the committee discussed, 5.3 was their larger gap. During the CLT meeting and during the campus observation of PLC time, it was discussed that reteaching and corrective instruction was consideration for improvement. So we discussed that they have curriculum in place, they have uh, tier one instruction, but it's when uh, they discover the kid struggles or the classroom struggles, the corrective action, and what do we do then? So that's something that they want to focus on throughout the school year, which is 5.3 data-driven instruction. They want to focus on student data, teacher data, and program usage data. Of course, growth and demographic and attendance will also um, be a part of that. For a few primary, their rationale, of course, was reteaching and corrective instruction. They want to focus on all decisions that drive instruction. The essential action will help the campus focus on what we talked about, student data, teacher data. The desired outcome, and um, throughout this process in the targeted improvement plan, there are several tabs that TEA requires, and so that's the same for all districts in the state of Texas. And so we have to include a desired outcome. All staff are engaged in coordinated and proactive planning to identify students who have significant learning gaps or who lack foundational skills and provide them with intervention. Teachers will discuss corrective instruction and add the information to their weekly lesson plan template. And at Few Primary, they all use the same template and that was provided by Ms. Guillory as the start the school year. And if you'll uh, refer to the diagram at the bottom, they were going to they are planning to track all students using the map, achieve 3,000 and Wilders on their data wall, instruction for all students at the meets level, corrective instruction built into the lesson planning, and of course, with any program, we need to consider monitoring the program. It's not just implementation, it's monitoring through data analysis of the formative assessment is what FA stands for, and please, if there's any acronym that you don't, do not understand because sometimes we forget to spell it out. Identify the approaches, meets, and masters th throughout the year as compared to STAR. Instruction for advanced classes at the master's level. So not only do we focus on uh, getting students to approach and pass at the passing level, we also want meets and then our advanced students to master the assessment. And then on the, uh, the side is domain one, two, and three, where in 2019, those, are, those were our scores, 58, 60, and 59 for Q primary. And the goal for each domain is 65, 65, and 65. I know that seems like a small um, amount, and it also sounds like it's in the D range. So what I wanted to address here is that in the A3F estimator, which I gave y'all a little more in your packet of the paper clipped area, and TEA has given us an A through F estimator where we can enter, um, hey, say we want to aim for approaches at 70%, meets at 35%, and um, masters at 20%. Just say those numbers. We can plug that into the estimator and see where that falls. And I did include that in your packet where if we um, just changed approaches, meets, and masters, 
And each campus also has a goal for that. So not only do we have a domain goal, they have where we're making small steps to the, to the final product that um, it changes domain one, two, and three just by our different scores in each area. And I have some here as I was looking at the website this afternoon. Looking at, we have a risk assessment that's still available. Yes. Uh, and that position has not been filled. So with that, I mean, that's going to affect, you know, these students as uh, time going there. Is, uh, do we have any applicants for that? Or what, I know it's been open for quite a long time now. Um, so we had somebody in that role that we just really loved, but she wasn't able to meet all the demands of the job. So she actually resigned about two weeks ago, I guess. So it's been open in that time. We've had a couple of applicants, but um, they are not applicants that we would like to pursue at this time. We do have somebody else who is sort of interested, and I'm really going after that person. She's in a local uh, school district, but she, her desire is to come back to Jasper. She was here before, so I'm really working on that again. Well, I can tell you one bold move that's happened already, and that was the approval that we had of uh, adding a full day eight for every classroom. So every pre-K teacher has a full-time eight now, and that is amazing in and of itself. So the students uh, are able to be pulled in small group, and we do a lot of the instructional things in pre-K that we also do in kinder. So we're hoping to get an earlier start. And instead of hurting cats, we can actually do lessons and have enough coverage, enough eyes, hands on deck to keep the kids engaged. That's so we're excited about that. That's good news. It is. Thank you guys for approving that. <laughs> yeah. Good and that was through House Bill 3. Yeah. We entered that requirement. Yes. Thank you. That concludes our few primaries. So if we have any other questions for few. Can I add something just so that you guys know? I'm really proud of the team building that we've been doing at Pew Primary. I feel like we're really developing uh, trust within our campus. Would you agree, Ms. Gordon? Uh, I just, I feel like we're doing good things. Um, I think our teachers are getting happier by the day. I hope, I see one in the audience. Um, I hope that they have good things to say. We have a lot of really transparent types of conversation. The administrators are present in the classrooms. We're really working the walkthrough uh, data and having conversations, and I love Get Better Faster. I think uh, Dr. Hudson put some really good things in place, and Ms. Willems has really helped us, coached us on some things, and I feel like they're being implemented, and our focus is on being in the classroom, and I, I'm just really proud of the direction that we're headed. And that was uh, one thing I was going to point out whenever uh, you said, what else are we doing besides achieve or map? And that would be the observation and feedback. And um, our, all of our administrators are um, documenting their information and sharing that with teachers. So having conversations one-on-one -on -one with teachers, it makes a difference. It's not a gotcha. It's that we want to grow together. And I think that the teachers are really getting that we want to grow with them. Their failure is our failure. And so we, we don't want them to leave. We want to get better together. And so I'm just really excited about that. I love the staff. We have a couple more people that we got to get on board. And then we just want to keep them, keep them happy, and just move forward together. So that's my big goal. And I know it's the administrative team's goal. So they see us together. We do walkthroughs together. Um, we collaborate on everything. I think it's a true team. Do you all use on the Q side of the map? Actually, we collect a lot of data uh, data. achieve 3,000 is called Smarty Ants mm -hmm. at the younger age, and it starts at pre K. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what is a wow? I guess wowzers is math. It's a math. Mm -hmm. okay. yes, and we do not have wowzers for pre K, uh, it starts at kindergarten, but we have I station. So, we tried to be consistent across where we saw which program would start at pre K and go all the way through because that's the best 
system for our, you know, keeping consistency, but Wowzers did not go down to pre-K. And with pre-K, I have to tell you, we have to teach them how to use mouse and all of that. It's easier with the tablets because I think they're born knowing how to scroll, but they don't really know how to use a mouse. So those are skills we have to develop. So our usage stuff is not that great at this point, but our teachers are really working to teach them how to do those things. You know, we had a conversation at work kind of today is that some of the uh, child care centers are actually having to close some of their classrooms But we but have had that discussion since you mentioned yeah. it. We have. But they uh, have because more of their three year and four year olds are right. getting into the school. You know, with all the different things like that. The longer we have them, and, and that's what goes, uh, that will help transition into this junior high, is that the longer we have them in the Jasper ISD system, we do much better. Because as you can see, that we are a D and an F at our elementary but then we grow to a C and a B as we have them longer at junior high and high school. So uh, our gaps, uh, we have smaller gaps where our 1.1, 2.1, 3.1, and 4.1 was all a, a much smaller uh, gap at the junior high level, but we still discussed, and it was, it was interesting because at the few teacher meeting and at the junior high teacher meeting, they came up with the same um, effective instruction but it looks different at the junior high level than it does at the elementary level. Um, but I, I do want to share with you the conversation that, uh, that they have structures and systems in place for tier one instruction. They just wanted to go for a deeper dive of the student and for that individualized planning for interventions for struggling students. And I, that was a great meeting that we had with your teachers because they just latched on we at uh, junior high and um, we discussed uh, the levers we discussed the essential actions and uh, we had sticky notes and we we mm -hmm. developed the plan but they still uh, wanted to tackle uh, the closing the gaps domain three where they did end up with the d of digging deeper into the accountability system okay and so uh, they they felt like that the campus lacked identification of students with individualized needs. So not only do we have the same programs like Achieve and MAP, it's just getting into the program and utilizing the reports in the program. So that's another step we wanted to take, that lack of in-depth conversations that the teachers were having. And with the PLC time, and they have PLC time every day, and they, at secondary level, they're able to have those discussions at, at a more uh, frequent um, time. So um, for Domain, uh, his goals, um, for the junior high goals was 75%, 83%, and 72%. Um, and the same um, desired outcome that the, all the staff are engaged in the coordinated and proactive planning to identify students with significant learning gaps and the reason why those desired outcomes look the same is, like I said at the beginning, that uh, this effective schools pr framework is a scripted uh, a program that they want us to follow certain steps. So they give us what the district will do, what the campus will do, and that's all outlined in our targeted improvement plan. So they have a true guide uh, with the programs that they're uh, initiating. Okay, so any questions for junior high? <coughs> okay, so now Parnell looks a little different. So I wanted to give like a background of where we've been with Parnell. And this is also TEA. And um, in 17-18, they asked uh, districts to uh, complete targeted elements. And if you were on the board at that time, Ms. Stevenson came and talked to you about this one pager that TEA had on targeted elements, and it was called the TASE process, and it was with the PSP, uh, and it was locally developed. Then in 1819, um, there was a targeted improvement plan, so TIP, exactly what we're going through with FU and junior high. It was also through the TASE process and the PSP with an outside facilitator. And during that same year, um, as the TIP was being implemented, the Campus Improvement uh, Committee had to start developing a turnaround plan. And um, 
that, that was all turning from the TAGE process to the Effective Schools Framework process. And uh, Region 5 was learning along with us. And, and so now we are here today, the, implement, the implementation of the turnaround plan. Um, in Parnell, they chose two um, actions, which was 3.1 and 5.3, positive school culture. They wanted to get their uh, climate and culture uh, established and uh, make it a happy place at Parnell. And we had to write all those steps. One, we will do this. Two, we will do this. Three, will we do this. And then the 5.3, the effective instruction. So Parnell is a little more detailed than a uh, few and junior high. So the implementation plan, each month we have tasks. October, November, December, the campus leadership team uh, develop expectations and practices and policies. And look, before I start with October, let me go back. The beginning of school, they've already accomplished lots of things. Um, August and September, they had the uh, kickoff to their new um, vision. They have t-shirts, the whole staff has t-shirts. Now all their students have t-shirts and there's pictures all over Facebook if y'all have not had an opportunity to see that. And they held a pep rally to kick off the celebration. So everyone knows empower, nurture, and inspire. And inspire. Inspire, nurture, empower. And for me to be able to say that, that's what we want. We want everyone in the community, we want you guys to know that's what uh, Parnell wants. And now they're defining that. So it's not just words on a shirt, not just words on a banner. It's now we're at the point where practices and look fors. Okay, what is the, what are those three words look for to an adult? What are those three words look in the community and to a student? And then they're going to display those. And they're already in the beginning stages of that because that's October and uh, November. Then they also always solicit input and collaborate on the final look fors. So that's what we did with the vision at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. We brought in the community and we asked, this is where we wanna go, the staff. Not only did the campus leadership team develop the vision, then the staff also uh, played a role because we changed some words once they uh, came back from the staff and that was before Ms. Edwards was there. But she started off the uh, year and implementing all these uh, things that she did not uh, play a role in creating, but she's gonna implement. Um, it, administrators and district level directors will document campus climate on the campus and in classrooms. You'll see that on several months for November, March, and uh, the, it, three times a year is that we're going to use a rubric and we're going to document the campus climate and we're working on that rubric. Um, monitor to ensure artifacts in the classroom. That's a new buzzword for TEA is artifacts. It is a um, the, the look fors, the uh, exemplars of what we want to exemplify uh, what the vision is. And also training will pro be provided at the campus on the vision and the high expectations. When I say training, it's through a faculty meeting. When they talk about the look fors and she goes over the expectations, that's through um, faculty meetings and uh, PLC time. So I kind of summarized uh, any of that information. And um, also I see in uh, October, teachers will receive feedback and coaching using the see it, name it, do it model to support their development. That's the same thing we were talking about at FEW uh, where teachers are um, observed for 10 to 15 minutes and then the, the administrator or the assistant principal or principal sets up a meeting and conferences with that teacher. They may show them a video of what they'd like to see in the classroom and then they plan a time to go back. It's all about getting better faster. To me is, uh, I mean, I was reading that, is uh, um, the positive school culture, you know, is that's a hard to measure. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, how are you measuring that? And is there a complete 100% buy-in? You know, where it's like, like you said, showing mm -hmm. videos, is that kind of what we talked about in the convocation? Well, uh, there's a lot of buy-in uh, because we talk pretty regularly um, with, the, with the teachers. There's a lot of collaboration. Um, we're starting like first thing in the morning, you know, we play music, we play, we have student greeters. We're the happiest place in the district. 
So no, you can put it on yeah. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but um, it's, it's, it's a process. Could I, could I give you like empirical data right now? No, I can't. Um, but just from comments that parents and, and teachers and even students have made, I think we're making progress right. and we're moving forward. What I saw on Facebook, social media post, it has been very positive mm -hmm. about the music, you know, when y'all yes. that. And the kids greeting. And yes, now they're going to have to apply for the job. We have so many students that are getting early and they want to be a part of it. So they're going to do a job application. You know, we have to have references. And um, we're going to, of course, we're going to increase that to doing it for the kids with coming in on the buses, too. So um, it's, it's a process. It's just kind of started sort of haphazardly, but it's really developed. And um, I think it's one of the things we're most proud of. Um, what was the... Uh We are not a Capturing Kids Park campus at this time. However, we did do a social contract with our teachers and our staff um, to see, you know, I kind of want to get a, a, a gauge of where they were and, and what was important to them coming in late. So we did a, we did a, a social contract there. Um, but at this time, we're not a full-fledged campus, you know, with, with the program. But we are utilizing some of the aspects, such as um, greeting our students. Um, we're just doing it sort of in a universal way versus at the classroom. But our teachers do that, too. So I think we're using aspects of it. What is the, uh, you know, looking at the, uh, um, the community engagement, parent engagement, so uh, parent liaisons that we're using, how are they really active in this? Do you have to have that parent engagement? Yes. They they're are all like on that. the committee. They're on the committee, um, yes. and we brainstorm things to do. Um, we've done a couple of things like our family dance night, uh, Zumba, and had some good turnout. So we're trying different things, and, and it's been positive so far. And you asked about how we measure the group. Uh, uh, we do have rubrics from Region 5 that have shared with us throughout, um, actually through our observation and feedback training last year that all the principals had to miss several days. I'm not having to do this, that this year, but we have uh, some exemplars that we're developing that from. Oh, and in parent engagement, Mr. Van Lander, let me remind everybody about the chess club that's starting. Yes. Um, we already have, I think, over 30 students involved. Right. We may have to go buy, well, we're going to have to go buy some more chess sets now before we get started. <laughs> so. We are donating one, but when does it start? Next Tuesday is our first meeting. <laughs> okay, yeah, my daughter told me she has to stay one week. <laughs> the parent liaisons chosen, are they volunteers? They, I, I was not a part of the process of how they were chosen because it was um, it was a process last year. But um, I'm, I think that they had to have a willingness and a lot of it was um, teacher collaboration about how they were chosen. But I, again, was not a part of that process, so I don't want to misspeak. They were in place when I came. Yeah. So the parent liaisons, first we put out a request on the campus and it 